So this is about the HD21 study. As said before, in adult patients suffering from advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma, the German Hodgkin study group has established a very intensive regimen, the escalated Biocorp regimen, as standard of care. It's highly active with a very good progression-free survival on the one hand. On the other hand, it's quite a, a burden of treatment for the patients. It's a very intensive regimen with side effects in the short and long term. And therefore, it has been questioned if the risk-to-benefit ratio is appropriate. So from a worldwide or global perspective, other, other colleagues are following more the ABVD approach, which is much less intensive, but cannot reach the same cure rates as BACOP. We try to improve the strategy by adapting it to the individual risk of the patient. So this is the, the interim PET adaption, where we use only four cycles for patients who respond very well to the treatment, but six cycles for those who do not respond. In the HD21 study, we wanted to improve the regimen itself, so the BACOP regimen. And therefore, we used bentuximab vedotin, an antibody duct con conjugate targeting CD30 in Hodgkin lymphoma. So you don't have to go into detail. So the basic message of the new regimen on the right side, the BRICAD regimen, is that it is not as long as BCOP. So BCOP used to take two weeks and eight, de uh, eight days infusions. It's a very intensive regimen. Now, this was cut down to three days only and removed, for example, leomycin with lung toxicity or vincristin with neuropathy Procarbazin with gonadal toxicity and infertility, and second leukemia. So we really modified the regimen substantially with the help of BV, which was introduced. This regimen was then tested in the HD21 study. As you can see, it's again a rare disease, but we had 1,500 patients enrolled into that trial within four years because it's an international trial conducted in nine countries globally, in Western Europe, but also in Australia and New Zealand. It's an investigator-initiated trial. It was funded um, and supported by TIGA, by Takeda. In this trial now, we asked two questions. The first question was to improve the tolerability. We wanted to, be, uh, we wanted to see less toxicities than with BACOP. However, at the same time, we did not want to lose efficacy. So we asked for non-inferiority of the novel regimen. Coming to the first um, goal of the study first, which is the treatment-related morbidity, this was significantly less with BRICAT than with BICOP. And this concerns many, many aspects. For example, the need for transfusions, as you can see here, but also neuropathy. Neuropathy was actually quite a rare event in higher grades. It's just one patient after one year. And grade two, which is not high grade, but still kind of disabling, it's in 14 out of 700 patients after one year. So almost all patients recover from the treatment. We also saw, saw a full recovery of gonadal function in women, and this is basically in all women, and uh, even more so also in men, uh, a, a significant improvement, so more than 100% better than with BACOP. So this is really significant for the patients. And now coming to the efficacy, if you have a regimen like ABVD, would have a toxicity profile like our regimen, so it's better tolerated than BACOP, but what's about toxicity? Uh, efficacy. And that's what comes next, what we observed then, that in this case, efficacy follows safety. Because we could give the regimen in full doses for all patients, surprisingly for us, we achieved better outcomes in terms of efficacy than with BACOP, which we thought is not possible, actually. So this is significantly better than escalated BACOP. And overall survival, obviously, is very high, but there's very few events and very few deaths, um, especially in this young patient cohort dying from Hodgkin lymphoma. We have patients, two-thirds of the patients, treated with four cycles only. This takes only 12 weeks. 
If, for example, treat patients with ABVD based regimens, it will take half a year, six cycles, with high cumulative doses of anthracyclines, for example. That's something we don't need for two thirds of our patients because after 12 weeks, treatment is finished, no radiotherapy, they're gone through. And if you look at this specific quote, that's the orange curve, um, they have a PFS of 97% at, with a mature follow up of four years, which is unprecedented in clinical trials. To summarize, the novel regimen is better tolerated. That's what we aimed at. We wanted to have a better tolerable regimen, <coughs> which is relevant for the patients. It includes any kind of toxicities, but also neuropathy, which can be very long lasting, and gonadal toxicity with infertility, again, which can be Made, can exist for the rest of the patient's life. And at the same time, although it's so much better tolerated, it's more active. Um, a little bit to our surprise, that was not the primary goal of the study, with very high PFS rates at four years, which are, as I said before, unprecedented in any study. And this is, although most of the patients receive only four cycles of treatment within 12 weeks. That's why we think that the risk to benefit ratio of this novel regimen is very good and we recommend it as a standard of care treatment option for all adult patients with advanced stage classic Hodgkin lymphoma. I'd like to thank all co-investigators co and you for your attention.